I'm interested in human communication, and I'm interested in how we make noises and how we hear noises. And over the past few years, I've got more and more interested in, as Helen said, laughter, because laughter is weird. Laughter is not like a lot of the other things that we do to make sound. So laughter is basically, at its heart, what laughter is, is a different way of breathing. What we do when we're breathing is we use the intercostal muscles, the muscles between our ribs, to go in and out. You lift the, air, the chest out to draw air in, and then let that relax back, and you breathe out. So that's, that's staying alive. That's what you're all doing. That's good. Keep doing that. Don't stop. <laughs> What we do when we speak and what makes us different from other mammals is we can also use those same muscles in a very different and controlled way. So if I keep speaking without taking another breath, those same intercostal muscles are now controlling the flow of air out through my larynx. And if I push this and keep speaking without taking another breath, you'll hear they have to start squeezing it out. Now, that's, that's really amazing. Again, human who have as much fine control over the intercostal muscles as we do over our hands. It's extraordinary. Now, what laughter does is it comes along and it totally overwhelms this. So this is that same scale of me talking. That's me laughing. So those same deflections that you're seeing here are going incredibly quickly. So what this does physically is it's squeezing air out. It just goes, ha, 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 ha. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. It doesn't let you breathe in, doesn't let you speak. It's trying to kill you. That's what's happening. <laughs> And it gives laughter this very characteristic acoustic profile. So, I mean, it's a really basic way of making sound. You can sort of stamp on someone's chest and recreate this. It's extreme. <laughs> don't, don't, don't do that. Keep breathing, don't do that. So you get this really interesting property. And the other thing it does is you start to generate incredibly strong forces, much stronger forces than you normally get under voluntary control of speech. Right, can you hear me at the back? Is it possible to turn the sound up? Because it was a bit quiet earlier. So I'm going to play you a clip of somebody trying to speak while doing a radio broadcast. And the line in blue underneath shows the pitch of the people's voices. So listen to what it does to her voice when she, hear, she hears something a little bit amusing. So this is pitch down here. And you'll hear somebody coming down the line who's saying something a little bit odd, a bit funny. Singer Rock's unpopular replacement has now been dismissed, with the Army's popular chief of staff, Jack Twat, taking over. A 40-foot sperm whale, which was stranded in the Firth of Forth for more than four days, is now thought to be swimming towards open waters again. It freed itself late last night. Marine experts are hoping to establish this morning whether the whale is finally back at sea. Good luck to the whale. Ten past eight is the time. An investigation... <laughs> There is a great deal to love about this clip. I really like the way the guy down the wire, he's got to say Jack Twat, and he just goes for it. He goes, <laughs> Jack Twat, nothing to see here. And if you listen really carefully, and I've made spectrograms of this, someone who's in the studio with Charlotte Green leans in and goes, Jack Twat, at her. <laughs> and they're trying to make her laugh, and they manage it. And you can see her, the pitch starts to wobble around. She's losing control, and then it shoots right up. And she continues making noises long after she's tried to stop. So she's on live radio. She doesn't want this to be happening. So laughter is really interesting. If you ask human, adult humans about laughter, we'll say, oh, we, I laugh at comedy and I laugh at jokes. In fact, we laugh most of the time when we're with other people. It's a social behaviour. And also, it's not specific to us. So rats laugh, and they laugh in a very similar way to other primates, including human babies. Well, that's my human baby, he's not a rat. But he's being tickled there, and that's a rat being tickled, and that's where you first see laughter emerging. It then goes on to be a really important social cue for all mammals, as far as we know, in play, and all mammals play. When they play, they have what's called play face. It's a very loose, happy smile. Again, you can see that on these kids here. You can see it on those dogs. You can see it on that chimpanzee. You can see it on my brother. Nothing sinister. <laughs> not saying, oh, he's a bit like a chimp. Um, but it's actually quite hard to take photographs of human adults with the play face because we tend to tighten up into a smile. When there's a sound associated with that face, that's a laugh. And in fact, it's exactly the same as chimpanzees. They, make a they, have, a, they have a lovely little sort of <laughs> laugh, which is very, very human. It's very similar to ours. So it's a social behaviour, it's an affiliative behaviour, and that seems to be why it's, it's such an important early behaviour that gets emitted by babies. It's part of the bonding process with their caregivers. We got really interested in this. So we, it's, the more we've looked at it, so the more different ways it opens up and becomes more interesting. And one of the things we got interested in is kind of the difference between voluntary laughter and involuntary laughter. So what Charlotte Green was doing there was she was laughing, although she was trying very hard to not laugh. A lot of the time when we laugh, we're choosing to laugh. We're deliberately joining in. There's some work with faces. So this is the psychologist Paul Ekman 
Which of these two smiles looks nicer, the one on the left or the one on the right? The one on the right. In fact, the two smiles, the mouths, are exactly the same. What's different is the eyes. And so they've simply morphed a photograph here. They've pasted the unsmiling eyes in here and smiling eyes here. And the idea of this is that it's hard to voluntarily control eye move, you know, sort of the wrinkling of the eyes when you smile. So the more genuine smiles have got more stuff going on here. I have to say, I have seen America's Next Top Model, and I know that Tyra Banks has got something like 28 different smizes where she smiles only with her eyes. So <laughs> I question the involuntary, but the, certainly the more involuntary a smile, the more it sort of has this. So we were interested in how that was happening. What, what does that mean in laughter? So we just did, along with my colleagues, the fantastic scientists, um, Carolyn McGessigan and Zarina Agnew, we did whatever it took to make each other laugh and recorded it in an anechoic chamber. If you've ever been in an anechoic chamber, it's a lot, being buried, a lot like being buried alive. Not very funny. So we really just did whatever it would do to make each other laugh. I'm going to play some laughs. So we also produced some voluntary laughter, posed laughter, if you like. Have a listen and tell me if you think this next laugh is a real laugh or a posed laugh. <laughs> Real or posed? Pose. Pose. <laughs> That's real. You can hear the pitch is higher. And also, in pose laughs, you get sort of nasality, a <laughs> sound. You, you never get in real laughter. Here's another one. It's going to work, isn't it? <laughs> real or posed? Pose. <laughs> She's still going. Yeah. <laughs> Real or posed? Real. Okay, so the, the pitch, it's, you can't actually voluntarily produce those sorts of pitches and pressures. What we found when we take it into the brain is that um, brain areas that are involved in, they get primed when you hear laughter, because laughter is very, very contagious. When you hear laughter, you get ready to join in. These brain areas don't care about real versus posed laughter. We can find other brain areas that do care. What we do find is the more any one person gets ready to join in when they hear laughter, the better they are later on at telling real from posed laughter. So it's not just joining in. When you listen to laughter and you get ready to laugh and you start to laugh along with that laughter, you actually understand it better. And I think this is just like a tiny insight into the world of complexities and nuances we use around laughter. So there's a rather lovely quote that laughter is the shortest distance between two people, but I think it's even more than that. We actively go out there and use it to close the distances. Thank you very much.